In the Christmassy months, almost every single night, Rogue's heart craves some retro delight. Whether Yoshi's Island up here by Mario, he always knows exactly where he wants to go. He dusts off the consoles, untangles their wires, and spends hours and hours fulfilling his desires. The games that he played put him under a spell, and he played them on an HD TV. That went well. But this year would be different, Rock had decided. He would invite some people to play alongside him. Hey, what's up, it's your boy Rock. Can you smell it? Well, let me give you a hint. It's the smell of Christmas spirit. And good God, is it poignant. If you ask me, the best way to spend the holiday season is by playing some of the many classics of yesteryear. I mean, come on. What could be better than playing Superman 64 for Christmas? The past few years I've had a tradition of staying home and playing video games alone. Last year my selection spanned all kinds of generations and it's most definitely what caused my loneliness. But this year I've done the unthinkable and invited some people to play these games with me. Because who doesn't want to play Pokemon Snap with other people? And to sweeten the deal, I've made an invitation that nobody would dare pass up. Eh, uh, okay. Hey, are we at the right place? It's thanks to candle wax and pizza. Must be here. Oh, hey, what's up? It's your boy Rogue. Hey, what's up, Rogue? It's your boys. Hey, don't be a bitch. Introduce yourself. What the f did you think I was trying to do? Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's settle down here. We'll start with the one not wearing glasses. Guess I'll start then. I'm Carson. E employed by day and McDonald's chef by night. You guys are considered chefs? It is astounding how much you can find that definition. So, what do you do with EA? Oh, I'm in upper management. Huh, so can you stop all of the employees from being abused? Not even a little bit, now. <laughs> Great, how about you? I'm Maxwell, but you can call me Well. Really thought you would have swung for the first half. We did not mention that name in our family. Alright! Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? Probably not, I don't leave the house much. Wait, are you the idiot who tried to buy a house with a copy of Chibi Robo? The offer still stands! No! Worth a shot. So, I'm guessing you guys are here for the party? Yeah. So, is this everyone who's coming? Unless we get burgled, then yeah. Huh. We were kind of expecting there to be some... girls. What could have possibly made you think that? Well, somebody can't read Comic Sans. I'm font blind. You poor bastard. Don't patronise me, bitch. Just tell me what the fucking pussy says. What the hell does this mean? It means we're playing games that are older than you. Oh, like Sonic Boom? That came out seven years ago. Yeah, and I'm legally six, so what's the problem? I specifically said on the invitation, no Sega games. Why? Fuck Sega. Okay, so what we're we gonna play then? Guys, come on! We're gonna play some old school classics, gems from the past! Retro games! Whoa! Now remind me what one of those is. 
What? History began in 1958 with the release of the world's first video game, but the medium wasn't truly justified until 2002 with the release of Dosh and the Giant on the GameCube because honestly, can you imagine this industry without Dosh and the Giant? I sure can't. Around the time home consoles became a standard, technology began to evolve, and quickly. And when you have something that's continually improving, older alternatives are gonna become obsolete at some point. There's a reason that Just Dance 2020 was the last Just Dance game on the Wii and it's because God doesn't exist. But just because a piece of hardware is made obsolete doesn't mean that it doesn't still have merit. Games still exist for the hardware, and a lot of times games are good enough and different enough to those that succeed them that they warrant dusting off an old console to play them every now and then. And that's where we bring in the retro gamers. Allow me to introduce you to me. Have you heard of me? I collect retro games, specifically retro Nintendo titles, which means my opinion doesn't matter. I've been collecting games for quite a while now, but it never really felt that way until I started to hunt down the old stuff. Like I own almost 50 Wii U games, whoop de fucking do. But there was a critical point in my life where I decided I'd had enough of only owning games for an obsolete console. I wanted to own games for seven obsolete consoles. It's a dream come true! 2020 was the year I truly began collecting retro games. Now, of course, you may be wondering, what actually constitutes as a retro video game? Does this piece of bread count? I personally define a Game Boy console as retro if it came out before the Nintendo DS. Because I am not willing to look at a console I grew up with and say, why yes, this is an old piece of shit. But the definition of retro is different for everybody. So why not consult the hormone encrusted cesspool that is the internet? Some people consider consoles from two generations ago to be retro. And if we want to go by that metric, not only is the DS retro, but the Wii is retro too. Man, I am not ready to have that midlife crisis today. Four days ago, maybe, but not today. And then some people consider games and systems that are 10 years old to be retro. And by that metric, the 3DS is retro! Why yes, these are old pieces of shit. No! Well, that little tangent has taught me not to give a shit about any opinion other than my own. So based on my standards, let's take a look at the ghosts of my retro gaming past. So no, we're not looking at the Wii, it's not retro. We are looking at the 3DS, it's not retro. No, we're not talking about the Wii U, because it isn't turning retro soon, I swear to God! The Nintendo 64 was my first ever retro console, and my god, I love this system. Some of the greatest games of all time time released on this thing. Ocarina of Time, Yoshi's Story, Pokemon Snap, Banjo-Kazooie, Majora's Mask and Donkey Kong 64, which I'm not allowed to play because I refuse to own the expansion pack, Diddy Kong Racing, Super Smash Bros, Super Mario 64, is just okay. But Mario Kart 64, now that is what I would consider to be a good video game. And of course, we couldn't forget Mario Party. I sure couldn't. Mario Party 1, 2, and 3. I spent £100 on Mario Party 3 and only realised that my copy is f***ed after my warranty expired. I had to play through 1 and 2 first, it wasn't my fault. Later on I got a GameCube. Now I grew up with a few games from this console. Super Mario Sunshine, Mario Kart Double Dash, Super Smash Bros Melee, also known as f*** off. But I was playing these guys through my Nintendo Wii, so before 2020 I had no idea what it was like to own a square. This right here is my favorite home console of all time. And if this monstrosity of a hybrid console never released, it would be my favorite console ever released. How could it not be? It had Mario Party 6, The Thousand Year Door, Luigi's Mansion, Damnation, Pikmin, TV Robo and Dosh and the fucking Giant. It also had Wind Waker, but after the last two, who gives a shit? A few months later, I decided the N64 wasn't ancient enough for my liking, so I bought the SNES. Such an interesting design. I don't think I like it as much as the design our transatlantic cousins got, but I've grown to love this one. It has a certain elegance to it. Don't think I'm a fan of these cartridges though. Regardless, this console has some stellar games on it. I sadly don't have all too many, but I'm hoping Santa will change that this year. But luckily for me, I'm one of those idiots who pays Nintendo for their shitty online. So I've been able to experience a good amount of the library through the SNES Switch app. But the Switch came out in 2017 and because of that, fuck it. Around the same time as the Super Nintendo, I also decided I wanted to go grave digging on the go. So I picked up a Game Boy Advance, the SP-001 model specifically, which means I hate vision. I don't have a huge DBA collection, sadly. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Mario Power Tennis, Metroid Fusion, and Banjo Pilot and Grunty's Revenge. Only the necessities in this house. I picked up the original Game Boy at the beginning of 2021, and I absolutely adore this thing. There's just something about it that's so endearing, and it's really comfortable to play. 
even if the screen f***ing stinks. On a pristine condition system, the screen still looks like ass. So needless to say, the screen on my Game Boy... Yeah, it ain't looking too hot. It is absolutely riddled with dead pixels. And also, the screen likes to do this. But even still, I adore this system. And I mean, come on, I own a freaky Game Boy. That's tombstone worthy. I only have a few games for this thing. Mario Land? You'll have to take my word on it that it's Mario Land because this is disgusting. Mario Land 2, Pokemon, Tetris, and Burai Fighter Deluxe. Again, only the necessities here. And finally, the Nintendo Entertainment System. The NES version to be specific. Wait, there's a non-NES version? Welcome aboard, f***o! I've never really delved too deep into this system, sadly, but that doesn't mean owning the console is any less magical. I mean, look at this thing. It came out in the 1980s. Dinosaurs probably played Mario Bros and Duck Hunt on this sucker. And I I've played Mario Bros and Duck Hunt on this sucker. That's right, I can f with dinosaurs. Name me a greater pleasure. Whoa, retro games fucking rock. We still don't really get it. Guys, I really don't know how else to explain it. We're just playing old games. It's not that hard to understand. Why don't we just play one of the games? At least that way, we're not bored shitless. No, I refuse to play any game with whatever the f this is until I know everything there is to know about retro games. Are you sure there's no other way you can explain it? Well... We got NES Atari Mega Drive. All these old plastic boxes make me feel alive. So pick out a game and blow off the cart. I dare you to not feel joy in your heart. Whether it's 16 or 64 bit, every game on these consoles is a timeless hit. And when it comes to Christmas, I have only one mission. And it's to play these games. It's the best tradition. But enough of all that. Let's get down to business. It's time to embark on a retro gaming Christmas. Do we have to? Yes! The controllers look neato. They really aren't great. But they're impossible not to appreciate. All the pixels and polygons are so damn charming. The resolution hurts my eyes. This is really alarming. Well, if the homegrown stuff just ain't for you, then try out the Game Boy. The amount of car journeys this got me through. These classics have stood the test of time. They're old. They're clunky. They are sublime. Try Mario Party 1, 2, or 3. A blitter in my palms, this isn't for me. Or Donkey Kong Country, it's really great. How could you not love it? I fucking hate it. Try Mario Paint. You really grasp my straws. You would want to hire a plumber that draws. Look, these old ass games just aren't for us. Well, too bad. This is a retro gaming Christmas. Why not try some games that are a little more new? What part of that sounds appealing to you? Super Mario Party adds loads to the mix. This game is abysmal compared to 6. There must be some modern stuff you like to play. Not around Christmas, what do you want me to say? Oh hey, why not play Chibi Robo Ziplash? Don't ever talk to me about that trash. Alright, then it'll last match with a variety of courses. Or you could always just play Sonic Forces. Alright, what the hell is wrong with you two? No, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, so what's wrong with playing Chibi Robo Ziplash, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, or even Paper Mario Color Splash? The fact that that sentence even started! Why would I play those games where I can play Chibi Robo, Mario Power Tennis, and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door? Because these games are infinitely better than those games. Ah! Whoa, you really need to calm down. No, what needs to happen is you two need to get the hell out of my house! Well, that's alright, because we didn't want to be here anyway. Have fun f***ing your SNES all night. I will, damn it! F*** that guy. What the hell was wrong with those guys? I was just trying to show them the true meaning of Christmas and they just sh** all over it, so whatever. I'm gonna get back to playing Yoshi's Story. Although... Yoshi's Crafted World could also be fun to play. Wait... What the f*** just happened to me? Alright, fine. I won't play Yoshi's Story. I'll play Super Mario Kart instead. Even when I have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe right here. Oh god. Alright, fine. I'll just play Ocarina of Time. Instead of Breath of the Wild. What the f*** am I doing? Well, when everything you've ever believed in comes crumbling down, what better is there to do than sleep? I'll, uh... I'll see you around. Oh no, consequences! Do you know why you're here, Rock? Is it because I hit that guy who dressed up as a very convincing snowman? That... 
That was bad, but no, you're here for something much worse. Did I time travel in my sleep again? No, god damn it. You were just a dick. Oh, those guys deserved it. They shit all over my traditions. It said that Chibi Robo's blush wasn't garbage. So that was enough reason for you to forcefully kick them out of your home? Yes! What the hell else was I meant to- Silence! Just because you don't agree with other people's views doesn't mean that you can't get along. Just because they dislike something that you love doesn't mean that you can't be friends with them. Rock, you need to be able to respect the viewpoints of others. You shouldn't immediately disregard them because of their opinions. And if a game came out less than 15 years ago, who gives a piss? You can still enjoy modern games while loving all the old junk. But I do! My favorite game of all time came out four years ago, but that doesn't matter! I just want to play old games around the Christmas season. I don't see what's wrong with that! <sighs> Enough of this. You will see the error of your ways when you awake. You'll see that not only are you wrong, but you're also a bit of an asshole. Wait, I'm asleep? Not anymore, bitch. <laughs> you know what? That tears it! If he thinks he knows which games are better, then I'll put him to the test. I'll play the oldest and newest games that I own in my favorite series, and I'll determine once and for all if a retro gaming Christmas is truly for me. All right, let's see which series made their debut in the retro age and have modern counterparts. I have a feeling there'll be a few. 2D and 3D Mario and Zelda, Metroid, Animal Crossing, Star Fox, Pokemon, Paper Mario, Mario Kart, Mario Party, there's gonna be a whole sh ton of Mario, isn't there? Well, in that case, what better series is there to start with than Paper Mario? My doctor warned me that if I talk about this series anymore this year, I might overdose. But this is the same guy who had me taking my inhalers the wrong way for 13 years. You gotta be f Fucking kidding me! The first entry in this series was Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64, and the most recent entry is the Origami King for the Nintendo Switch. This is a very interesting case where both of these games are on a fairly level playing field. For most other series, I feel like it's gonna be pretty damn obvious which of the two is better. But here, both of these games are pretty much neck and neck in terms of quality, but for wildly different reasons. I think the most contentious issue between the two is, of course, the combat. 64 initialized the critically acclaimed and time tested formula of turn-based battles infused with action commands that would go on to be praised by fans for two whole games. And the Origami King tries to reinvent the wheel by incorporating puzzle-solving elements into the beginning of each and every battle. Origami King's system is really unique and can be quite enjoyable, but I'm inclined to say that 64 has the edge here. Sometimes I just don't want to bother with the puzzles in the Origami King, and I would end up just buying my way out of them to get to the turn-based section, which is fundamentally a watered-down version of 64's system. That's not to say that my skin has never I crawled at the thought of engaging in battle in 64, but when that happened in the Origami King, it was only because I didn't want to engage in the puzzles. The battles themselves were so watered down from 64 that I was able to tolerate them. And for that reason, I just can't give this to the Origami King. I think at its best, the Origami King's battle system is just above 64's, but at its worst, it is miles below. In terms of story, I think I prefer the Origami King's. Sure, we don't get to see what's going on with Peach like we did in 64. This was my sole reason to live in August. But the Origami King does more with the overall plot than Bowser kidnaps Peach, because in this game, Ollie kidnaps Peach. Is Castle. Of course, in terms of the moment-to-moment -moment story beats and interactions, good f 64 is better. Nothing all too interesting happens between major story beats and the Origami King. Probably because there aren't too many characters to interact with. But just look at 64. The main goal of a chapter is to just save the star spirit. But suddenly there's a murder mystery going on in a town full of penguins. I love video games. Looking at the games from a distance, Origami King seems like it should be the better of the two. But when you actually get into the nitty gritty details, it is painfully obvious that 64 has the upper hand. And it's for that reason that I'm saying I prefer it to the Origami King. So, mark that one up on the scoreboard, we officially have one point for Retro. Now please don't take this to mean that I don't like the Origami King, because truly I do. It's a fantastic game in my opinion, but I think when looking back at my experiences with both of these games, I enjoyed 64 more. And would you look at that, I've overdosed. Somebody please pass me a defibrillator. Close enough. The first game in this series was Chibi Robo for the Nintendo GameCube, and the most recent entry was... <laughs> You. Did you really think this fucking thing stood a chance? Chibi Robo on the GameCube is a wonderful and charming experience. 
Ziplash is the polygonal equivalent to a vasectomy. I could pop this thing open and give it a fair shot, but I don't want to go through the effort of unsealing it. And also, I don't want my 3DS to fucking explode. I finally checked shitting on Ziplash off my to-do list for tonight. So let's let nature be nature and talk about Yoshi. The original Yoshi's Island might just be my favorite Super Nintendo game. Go ahead, try and find something wrong with this game. I bet you can't. You win this time. This game is generally lauded as one of the finest platformers on the Super Nintendo, but the newer games in the series have been going in an interesting new direction of bad. All right, let's be fair here. Many consider Woolly World to be the modern day equivalent of Yoshi's Island, but I'm in the camp who played this game once around launch, wasn't really into it, and refuses to try it again because I just hate character development. So let's stick with the game I played and enjoyed, Yoshi's Crafted World. It's okay. I really enjoyed my time with this one, but looking back at it, I wince at the thought of playing through this game again. It's really unique and interesting. Its new mechanics are a blast, but it is not an experience I can see myself wanting to have again for at the very, very least 13 months. Looking at Crafted World in a vacuum, it's an excellent game, but comparing it to the near perfection that is Yoshi's Island, it doesn't really stand a chance. But hold your horses, because technically speaking, this wasn't the first Yoshi game. No, 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 the first Yoshi game was Yoshi. I'd love to see how Nintendo's naming team would tackle films. Yoshi had a couple of puzzle games before his platforming debut, and I would compare these to his modern puzzle games, but they all look like this. What other Nintendo series starts with Y and ends with Oshi? Not Star Fox, but let's discuss. Star Fox. Or Star Wing, as it's known here in the UK, because 1993 was the year of Nintendo losing their f***ing minds. Jesus, man, have some decency. This game was revolutionary. It managed to cram three whole dimensions onto one Super Nintendo cartridge. But that gluttony does come at the cost of some stomach trauma. My diet only allows for five frames a second. Oh, thank Christ. Nowadays, playing this game is definitely tough, but it's a whole lot more tolerable than what was going on a few doors down. Good. God, I don't care for Star Fox Zero. I know, I'm as surprised as you are. I thought this game was gonna be fucking great. The controls are terrible. Having to constantly shift your attention between the TV and the gamepad, that works for something like Splatoon where the map is on the gamepad because you don't constantly need to be looking at that. If you wanna hit anything in this game, you better keep your eyes locked on the gamepad, but don't do that because you can't see where you're going. If you wanna do that, you'll have to look at the TV, but you can't aim for sh when you do that and the game isn't even fun, so what's the point in me even doing? This game is just a retelling of Star Fox 64, or Lilith Wars over here, Nintendo, what the f*** is wrong with you? Also, Star Fox 64 is pretty much a retelling of the original game, so fundamentally, Star Fox Zero is just the SNES game, with controls that piss in the shower, so you know what that means, more points for the Retro Corner, yay! Team Retro is on a roll and there is nothing that can stop us now, so let's keep this momentum going with The Legend of Zelda. The 2D and 3D series are both completely different beasts, so I think it's only fair if we tackle these guys separately. So, let's flip a coin to see which one we're going to be taking a look at first. All right, 2D Zelda it is. The first 2D Zelda released on the NES and was also the first Zelda full stop. And funnily enough, this game was entitled The Legend of Zelda. The most recent 2D Zelda is highly debatable though. Sure, we got Link's Awakening in 2019, but that was a remake of a Game Boy title, so the government refuses to acknowledge it. The last original 2D Zelda was A Link Between Worlds on the 3DS. And Triforce Heroes did release after this, but there are only so many people here that are willing to not play this game. I haven't personally played A Link Between Worlds all too much, but from what I have played, this game is a treat. Part of me feels like it isn't particularly fair to judge this game alongside another because of my lack of experience. I wish I had played more of this game, but sadly, I just haven't been able to. Too bad the original Zelda f***ing reeks. Zelda on the NES is the greatest migraine I've ever had. It's a landmark title, no doubt, but it's aged about as well as an ancient Egyptian corpse. It's slow, it's cryptic, it's relentlessly difficult. It is just no fun to play for me. In my eyes, there is absolutely no point in playing this game in comparison to modern installments. Oh God, they're retaliating! 3D Zelda, on the other hand, is a whole other beast. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is considered by most to be the greatest game of all time. But The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild redefined the open world genre, provided an experience that no other game has ever been able to deliver, and in my opinion, is a much better game than Ocarina of Time. I absolutely see where supporters of that game are coming from, but 
but the sense of freedom and discovery in Breath of the Wild is unparalleled. Comparing the two under a modern lens, it's no competition. And one sec, don't say, oh, Skyward Sword HD came out after Breath of the Wild. Seriously, don't. Too many people have said that to me today. This game is a re-release, and much like Link's Awakening, I refuse to care about it in this debate. Link, I love you, buddy, but f*** off. And while we're on the topic of rejecting one of the most revolutionary games of all time, Super Mario 64. The first ever 3D Mario game, and the first ever Mario game that I HATED playing through! As time goes on, I become more and more conflicted on this game. The fundamental gameplay here is incredibly fun and satisfying, and making Mario your bitch by mastering every move available here, it's damn near perfect. Even if you are playing this game with something that needs to be censored, but if you actually want to beat the game, it is not fun. At all. Trying to complete this game 100% is an exercise in frustration and misery. So many of the later levels unload an entire jar of tedious bullshit that leads to an inhumane amount of deaths. Shifting Sandland. Let's just not bother adding good collision detection to this pool and make the sand beneath it insta-death. TikTok clock. Hope you didn't like the floor, bucko, because we didn't feel like adding it to this level. Don't fall, but also, for the love of God, please do. Rainbow Ride. Who thought this was okay? This is on somebody's resume. Why in God's name would you you put random ass shapes with varying levels of slope detection in the butt f of nowhere and make it so that the only way you can get to them is by riding f***ing carpets that move at the speed of... You might as well play something else. This isn't Aladdin, this is a test of my f***ing patience! And I proudly fail every time. I am f***ing done! Surely hating a game you love this much would drive you to alcoholism, but I'd rather use the rest of Nintendo's major series as a coping mechanism. Huh. Most of these games and series got their start on the NES or Game Boy. The most bitch symbol Nintendo systems known to man. Oh great, I get to play games with three whole pixels. Almost every single one of Nintendo's series that debuted on the NES or Game Boy have much better modern equivalents. This isn't scary stories to tell in the dark, this is my eternal damnation. Seriously, look at all these series! 2D Mario, Pokemon, Metroid, Kirby, Kid Icarus, Punch-Out, Mario Tennis, and Golf! All of these games lick the shit off the shoes of their modern equivalents for breakfast. And even moving on to the Super Nintendo and N64, Mario Kart. Who asked for this? Donkey Kong Country. The SNES version is great. Tropical Freeze spits in its cereal. Super Smash Brothers. Is this a fucking joke? Even Mario Party. I know I vastly prefer the GameCube games to Super Mario Party, but... The N64 games? I have to take a trip to the hospital every time I play Mario Party 1, and all for what? The game to be okay? And if you're counting Mario Party Superstars, it's a compilation of the best bits from all three of the N64 games. Who needs this thing? And then there's the series that haven't even left the retro age yet. Earthbound, F-Zero, Dash and the Giant. These series have yet to receive modern day follow-ups. These three games would have made lovely additions to the National Bank of Happiness, but no! They're disqualified! They don't have anything to compare to, meaning Team Retro is down by 10 points! This is making me miserable! Speaking of which, let's talk about GameCube born series because f it, I have time. Luigi's Mansion. Okay, so there's 100% an argument to be made that either one of these games is superior. While I personally have more of a fondness for the original, Luigi's Mansion 3 might just be one of the best games I've ever played. The GameCube entry has some of the most perfect atmosphere known to man. You can feel how how haunted this place is. And you can also genuinely connect and sympathize with Luigi, but then the gameplay, yeah, you ever spend three hours pressing two buttons? Luigi's Mansion 3 might have an atmosphere that wouldn't be out of place in the weekday afternoon kids TV slot, but this game actually has gameplay. There's so many different tools to utilize that are all unbelievably satisfying, and they lead to genuinely brilliant moments. And speaking of genuinely brilliant moments, the cutscenes in this game came directly from God's nostrils. They are absolutely dripping with life and character, and they make me feel alive. Luigi's Mansion, I trusted you! The one series I thought I could count on, because what else do we have? Animal Crossing? I've seen sandpaper with more to do than this game. Pikmin, save me, you son of a bitch! Tell me, why did God allow a game with three Deluxe and Pikmin in the title to be the greatest entry in its series? Why couldn't we just cut the bullshit and let Pikmin reign supreme? <sighs> How? How could this be? How have so many of the games that I've held so dear to me been surpassed by their modern equivalents? Looking at them critically? Why are so many of these games pretty lackluster? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe... 
Retro games aren't as good as I once thought. Maybe the modern stuff has more merit than I ever gave it credit for. <laughs> Nothing says Christmas like a crushing reality shift. Rock. Rock. Can't you see I'm having an epiphany here? Your own stubbornness has landed you in something of a predicament. Is that not what I said would happen? I don't get what's so wrong with me having my own likes and dislikes. Am I not allowed to love retro games? Of course you are, dumbass. The problem is how you handled yourself when somebody disagreed with you. Buddy, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but you cross a line when you're nasty to other people because they have a differing opinion. At the end of the day, you can't push your ideals and beliefs onto others because if you do that, then you truly won't have anyone to share your interests with. Yeah, you're right. I just couldn't accept that people didn't share in my passion, but that didn't give me the right to treat them the way I did. I have to go. You still have time to make this right, Rock. And that's exactly what I intend to do. Wait a minute. Where the hell was that voice coming from? Not great. What do you want? Probably should have an N64 controller down with us. Listen, guys, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I love retro games, but you don't, and that's fine. Everybody's different, and I shouldn't have acted the way I did when you didn't want to do what I wanted to do. I was kind of an arse. Eh, it's alright. I had a somehow sort of fallen out of a cool chef at work. I mean, come on. Solid sh Supreme stores are much better than the McDonald's. That's barely applicable. Eh, I'm kinda of sorry too. After you forcibly kicked her out, I actually went home and played Sonic Forces. Guys, that game's bad! You are making it so hard for me to have the moral high ground right now. I mean, you could have warned him. Oh my god. Well, anyway, I got you guys presents. I hope there's no hard feelings. Oh, thanks, man. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. Oh, uh, see you again next year? Doubtful. Message received. Loud and clear. Well, even though everything I believed turned out to be a lie, I enjoyed today, and if I wasn't so mentally and physically exhausted, I'd probably be up for a round of Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Maybe it's a good thing I'm so tired. <sighs> well, I'm gonna head to bed. For real this time. And when I wake up, I can start planning my next Christmas party! Even if most of the retro games I played today ended up having better modern equivalents, I still adore these classics, and that's okay. Just like it's okay for Carson and Maxwell to not really care about these games. I'm finally starting to see that now. And who knows, maybe one year I could have a modern gaming Christmas and make it up to those guys properly. Well, that's probably just the sleep deprivation talking. I finally have a full set! All two! Huh? What's this? From Maxwell? Just because I couldn't enjoy it doesn't mean you can't, Maxwell. Sweet! How many times do I have to tell people I despise this game before they get the picture?